everybody. Hello, it's time for Cooking with Katie at a Cocktail. Guess what? I'm not at home. I am live on location from my father-in-law's house. He was gracious enough to invite us, well, number one, grac gracious enough to invite us to his home with two little kids who are just gonna tear the place up as they always do, uh, but also inviting us into his kitchen to host Cooking with Katie in a Cocktail. So uh, here we are. I don't even know what episode we're on. I like 12, maybe. Um, but today, for Cooking with Katie in a Cocktail, in my father-in-law's kitchen, we're gonna be making um, a sausage dip with fire-roasted tomatoes and spinach. So I'm really glad that you're here along for this journey. We could be cooking together and navigating my way, at least, through my father-in-law's kitchen do y'all ever cook in anybody else's kitchen and you find that it's not weird, but you just, you know, you have your things where you like them and you know where everything is in your own kitchen. And, um, and people have stuff that normal kitchens have, but sometimes they don't. Things. Your dad has everything that you need. This is my husband's father's kitchen, obviously my father-in-law. Ben, my production guy, is uh, reading all of your comments and... Um, He's going to be in charge of the production aspect today and running the camera. So if you have any comments, put them in the, uh, in the comment section on Facebook Live so that we can cook together. If you're just joining us, making a sausage dip with fire roasted tomatoes and spinach, let's be real. Sausage dip on its own is fantastic. Felt like it's summer, we were coming to my father-in-law's house, trying to think of ideas for this week's episode, and thought, well, let's make it a little bit heartier, make it more like a meal, um, because there's gonna be a lot of wine. There always is. And we needed something to kinda sit heavy and soak up that wine while we're catching up and visiting. Um, so we thought adding a little bit of fire roasted tomatoes and some uh, spinach to the, to the um, sausage dip was a good idea. So, uh, Cooking with Katie in a Cocktail brought to you by Nisa's Country Sausage. Obviously, today we're using Nisa's Hot Sausage and also Jolo Winery and Vineyards. When I first opened up a bottle of Jolo when I got here, so we're like already halfway gone, um, my father-in-law said, Jolo, 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 like uh, Jolie, Dolly Parton's Jolie. Thought it was brilliant. <laughs> already been into the sauce. Uh, no, this is uh, Jolo Winery Vineyards Crimson Creek. Love it. It's uh, a light red, and so I thought it would be perfect. Does pair very nicely with pork. So I thought that it was a good choice for today. Let's get started. Ben, you're behind the camera, so you let me know if anybody has any questions on our Facebook Live. Thank you guys There's for joining us. Lots of comments on here. Everyone um, saying how delicious it sounds and um, that they love sausage dip and Yes, it's gonna be great. And you know, anytime you mess with a summoner sausage dip, us by adding fire roasted tomatoes and uh, spinach, people get a little iffy. But I promise you there is a lot of cheese, there's, a, there's cream cheese, we're gonna have some mozzarella, I'm gonna add a little Gruyere in there, which is because I had it in the, in the uh, refrigerator before we were leaving town. Um, so it's just gonna be a whole mix of things. And we're going to, when the dip is in the oven, gonna slice up a baguette and make some crostini. You could serve it with crackers. You could serve it with tortilla chips. You could eat it with a spoon if you wanted to because it's gonna be that good. So I have on uh, the stove here, and again, I'm just, disclaimer, this is my father-in-law's kitchen. I do cook in here quite a bit, uh, but you know. But you usually don't remember it. Truth, truth. It's true. 100% truth. true. What about the time you dropped the, um, the twice-baked potatoes into the oven yes. upside down? Ben and I were not even engaged yet, and we had come here for um, Christmas. It was Christmas, and we had left my family's house. I'm putting a little bit of olive oil into the pan, by the way. We're going to get some onions going. There's going to be some onions in our uh, sausage dip. So we had left my parents' house in Charlotte, and we came to Raleigh, which is where we are right now. In my father-in-law's house we were coming for christmas eve dinner i believe yeah and before we left we had had twice baked potatoes from the night before and they had not been baked yet 
and my dad gave us the twice baked potatoes to bring for our dinner and we had been cheers by the way we had done quite a bit of that before we actually started cooking dinner Ben and I were in here and we were doing Brussels sprouts, I think, that year too, twice baked potatoes and Brussels sprouts. And um, I accidentally dropped the twice baked potatoes <laughs> out of this oven. And uh, no kidding, looking back on it years later, my husband and I actually cried about that because it was such a happy time. It was just like really sweet memories of before we had kids and um, back when we could do whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted. So, um, all right, to our olive oil, I'm gonna add a half of a yellow onion that I've diced. You see, Ben, your dad has cooking things. I found these ramekins. That's for peanuts and uh, party mix. All of life's necessities. When you're hosting and having friends over and cocktailing, all the things you have to have. Uh, quick question, um, okay. what is the Crimson Creek? Okay, so it's a, a red wine, and I liken it to um, a Pinot Noir because I think that it is not, it, it's like a, I don't want to say light body, but it's like a medium body wine, and um, I just happen to think that it is along the lines of a Pinot Noir. I think it goes very nicely with pork, obviously. I think it goes very nicely with chicken, which a lot of people think when you are having white meat that that goes that skews more white wine take all of that and throw it out the window you drink what you like i like a medium bodied uh red wine and that's what i find with crimson creek has um some mocha undertones also blueberry undertones are in there as well so um i think it's just a really nice red that is um so i it's weird to say so drinkable but it really it's not too heavy if that makes some sense for you. You need to tr try it. Try it for yourself. Visit Jolo Winery and Vineyards, but Crimson Creek is one of my favorites. All right, so we're gonna get these onions um, going. We're gonna saute the onions. I hope that I did that justice for Jolo Winery and Vineyards because I really do love it and I don't wanna, um, I don't want to compare it to, like, put it into one category, but if I had to, I would say Pinot Noir. Not as heavy as a Cabernet. Um, so while the onions are sweating down, we're also going to get our garlic ready. I have a lot of garlic in here, um, but it really, once it's all, you know, peeled and pressed through my garlic press, uh, I think it's about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. So let's get that ready. Move my wine out of the way. Hey, I did find this. <laughs> I did find this in Ben's dad's kitchen, and this is of no help to me at all. The tiniest little cheese grater you've ever seen. It's a good way to lose a finger. <laughs> said, I won't be using this, but I will be showing everyone. Oh, also, um, what is it? Scissors. I will. Like, probably right... One right there, maybe? Yay! There yes. There they are. Thank you. Okay. Also cooking with my friends. Can you see these on camera? Uh, yes. Hey, yes. <laughs> no reason to put uh -oh. them away. Uh, no, this is fun. You get to cook with people. It says, I cook with wine sometimes. I even add it to the food. There he is. And this guy. I don't know if you can see him. It's fun cooking at my father-in-law's house. You never know what you're going to find. Look at him. They're your friends. All right. We have onions going down. We're going to get this garlic ready. So, do y'all, what's the craziest thing when you're cooking at somebody else's house? I, uh, really for me, it's like I know exactly what we have. I know what kind of utensils I want to use. And, um, you know, you make do as you go along. That's all. I'm gonna get this garlic ready for the garlic press. Some of the things we did bring from our house, like I, Ben, you said that you thought your dad had a garlic press, but I wasn't sure. I could slice it myself. Does he have one? It's you probably think? up in that weird um, carousel thing right. of 
Well, I brought 40, my own. 45 year old utensils. I brought my own. I just didn't want to be without. Um, and it's one of those things that just makes my life a lot easier. Could spend time chopping it, but peeling the garlic. I did a good job of smashing these out of the paste, but. And again, um, these, this is four cloves of garlic into the press, about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. What are you laughing about? Just, um, Julie was telling me that I uh, do not need to tell all of Katie's mishaps. Yeah. From yeah, is exactly right. <laughs> all right. Whatever. Cooking with me is fun. Even my kids say so. They said, Mom, you doing your cooking thing today? And I said, yes, I am. Oh, by the way, the kids are upstairs with Granddaddy. God bless them. Good Took luck. a bottle of wine upstairs with him. I mean, for himself, not for the kids. But I uh, took a bottle of wine up there, and we said, see you when the show's over. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe, maybe one of them's coming downstairs. Maybe. All right. We're going to press this garlic into our pan. All that goodness in there. Oh, it smells so good. If nothing else, we will totally trash this place. The kids will anyway, but I'll leave it smelling delicious. Oh my goodness, my dad is watching. Is he? Hi, Granddaddy. Okay. So. Is he watching me or is he watching the kids? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, you guys, it smells so good in this kitchen. And for a real treat. All right, the onions are sweating down nicely. We are going to add a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning. It has some basil in here, some marjoram, some oregano. Uh, there's a little bit of sage. You can make your own Italian seasoning. I just happen to have already uh, a pre-mixed Italian seasoning. So you can make it yourself and um, it smells good, doesn't it? It does. It smells good. Um, and a teaspoon and a half is what you're going to add. Going to get that into... Richard commented, commented that she finally got a new kitchen. <laughs> I did. I had to leave my house to get one. <laughs> All right, so add that in. Cook it down. And then we are going to add our Visa's Country Sausage. And I am using the hot because um, this is primarily this dip is going to be for the adults. The kids will, I'm sure, will want to try it because it has cheese and we're going to be using bread to sop it all up. So I know they'll want to try it. The hot is not so hot that little kids can't eat it. It's just what we prefer. And so um, I wanted to, to use the hot. And it comes just like this. Nisa's Country Sausage comes in bulk um, ground by the pound. That's how you do it, and we're going to just add it right into our pan and start browning it. And I'm doing it this way because Nisa's, I've told you all before, is the only sausage that is allowed in our home. It also does not give off a ton of fat, so I don't need to drain it. And for other uh, recipes, definitely can drain it. Obviously, if we're making like breakfast sausage with the country sausage, we can drain it off because that's we're eating it just like that. But who doesn't like a little uh, sausage dripping in their their dip? You're not eating healthy when you're eating dip, okay? So just get over the extra drippings that I'm leaving in here. Nobody says, "Oh, I'm eating healthy, I'll have the dip." <laughs> no, but dip so good for get-togethers. Fourth of July is coming up. You might be entertaining. Socially distancing, entertaining. Um, we're here visiting with my father-in-law and just thought that it would be a really nice thing while we're enjoying our Jolo wine. Um, you know, dips are always great. They're always great. I'm going to wash my hands and get this into the trash can. Ben, do you have any other uh, stories you'd like to tell that embarrass me while I'm washing my hands? Uh, well, there's a bunch, but I'll just, I think the ones here at Dad's house are pretty much between that and the one that you told on the radio, um, what, last week? When we were here last? Oh, about how I ruined Father's Day by drinking That's what it was. Wine. Father's Day, that's what it was. 
And it really ruined Father's Day. <laughs> Um, Annabelle's asking where the children and Maisie are. So children upstairs. Maisie, I heard her growling at somebody out of the front door. Um, Maisie doesn't get a chance to look out the front door a lot at our house just because we don't want so many people walking by that we don't want her busting down the door. Yeah. Plus, you know, it's a, everybody right now needs a change of scenery, a dog included. We're doing the same thing every single day, going to the same places, walking the same walks. For the most part, we are seeing the same people, you know, like out on our, our walks, out on trails and stuff like that. So it's nice to get away for a little while. And um, we are going to be celebrating my husband's, my um, grandmother's 95th birthday tomorrow. Incredible, 95 years old. Grandmother is celebrating 95 years. That's tomorrow, and so we're going to be heading uh, to the New Bern area, which is where she is, and uh, celebrating her 95th birthday. And um, the kids are busy making some signs, and um, she's in a um, assisted living like, um, in a center, and with her friends, and um, we're not able to actually hug her, which is awful you know it just really is at 95 years old it's an, an awful awful thing but we were trying to think of ways to make her happy and think of ways to celebrate her 95th birthday and we knew that putting our eyes on her and her putting her eyes on us was very very important so that's what we're gonna do and then my niece our niece uh, my sister Molly the one who gave a kidney to my father in February uh, her daughter Tegan is turning two on the 4th of July. So it's, wow, 95 years old and then two, two years old. It's like well, both ends of the spectrum, but celebrations for everybody. So we have the sausage in. I almost forgot I was doing a cooking show. I was just chatting away. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we are browning the sausage. It is in with the onions. It is in with the garlic. It's in with the Italian seasoning. And we're just browning it. The nice thing about this dip is we're going to be putting it into our prepared, um, this is from the Pampered Chef, just like my little dip. It's a cheese, uh, it's your brie, it's your brie thing, right? No, that's not it. This Come is on. not the brie hole. Oh. This is just a a casserole dish, a small casserole, but I use it for all of the dips that go into the oven. It's great. I just put a little um, spread in here just to make sure that nothing sticks. So the dip, which is already going to be cooked and already melty, is going to go into that prepared dish and we're going to top it with some more cheese and put it into the oven. Are you stealing my wine? My husband just stole my wine. I didn't give you one to be fair. True. Very true. Dad only has so many wine glasses left. <laughs> when you uh, also when you open up Jolo, everybody wants a sip. So there you go. All right. Now, while this is continuing to brown, we're almost there. By the way, this is almost finished. We are going to add some healthy to this. Some spinach. I'm going to add some fire roasted tomatoes. We gotta replace that pan. It's on. Yeah, yeah. Maybe for Christmas, birthdays. That's the other thing. You can take inventory while you're here, and then you can kind of figure out what somebody needs in their kitchen. Um, but I love it, so thank you. This is uh, browning really nicely. I'm gonna add a half of a cup of chicken stock. This is where you could use white wine if you wanted to. I'm drinking red, so I felt, well, I'll just use some chicken stock. A half of a cup of chicken stock is gonna go in, but first, I do want to add the fire roasted tomatoes. Now fire roasted here, this is a drain by the way, it's just a can, 14.5 ounce can of fire roasted tomatoes. The fire roasted adds just another depth of flavor. If in your pantry you don't have fire roasted, go with just regular diced tomatoes. But if you're going to the grocery store before you make this, pick up a can of fire roasted because I think you'll really like the difference. We're gonna add a can, I did drain it, there's still a little bit of liquid in here, but um, one, just one can of fire roasted tomatoes into our sausage mixture. And get that all incorporated. And then I have chopped up 
up about four cups of baby spinach. You don't really have to chop it. Don't, don't waste your time is what I'm saying. Don't waste your time chopping neatly and uniformly. Just make it into some smaller pieces because we all know that when you are cooking spinach, it wilts down from this much to this much in a matter of time. So um, I would say about a good four cups of spinach, baby spinach, just roughly chopped. Could even just tear it up before you put it in here. Tear it up. <laughs> just tear it up. Hey, by the way, if you are just following along and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have all these ingredients, I'm gonna have the entire recipe, including some uh, photos that we took while we were for, you know, prepping, getting everything ready, and then a recipe and this live cooking demonstration uh, at cookingwithkatieatacocktail.com, and that will be up by tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that in case you're looking for the exact ingredients. And if there's anything misspelled, it's solely because we're here tonight. Right. Katie doesn't have to work tomorrow. Happy 4th of July, everybody. <laughs> hey, take this dip with you to, 4th of, to your 4th of July celebration. I guarantee every single person will be like, oh, can I have the recipe? Uh, it's that good. So, and you can double and triple this very easily. Uh, I have the four cups of baby spinach. I'm gonna add it into the mixture and we're gonna let it wilt down. And I'm gonna get my uh, half of a cup of chicken stock in there. And that will help with the wilting. And I'm just on medium, medium, medium heat is where, where I am. All right, so add your spinach. And watch how within a matter of seconds, this goes from pile high overflowing to, oh, there's spinach in there, that's weird. And don't worry, there's going to be so much cheese at the end, you probably won't even notice that there's any spinach in here if you're not a, a lover of spinach. But why not add some greens where you can, right? I would even say you could add kale, you know, whatever's coming from your garden this time of year. Kale's not till really till the fall, the winter time, right? We got kale right now. Yeah. But it's not, it's, it's struggling to... Yeah. Um, but spinach is coming, and so, right? I mean, not from our garden, it's not. This came from the grocery store, but. We, if we picked if we picked the leaves off of our spinach plants, there would be no spinach plants left yes, right now. Yes, that's right. Nora planted about eight, and they've all got about, uh, they've all got about, um, yeah, maybe 10 leaves on. He's making that noise because Maisie just walked through the camera to get in here and clean up any bits of sausage that I might have dropped. I don't know if you can even see her on the camera, but that's what she's doing. All right. So we're gonna cook this until the liquid that we added is evaporated, the spinach is wilted down. We're gonna to continue to incorporate all of the, the juices in here, but incorporate the onion and the, um, the Italian seasoning. Just let it cook all together. And it won't take long for the liquid to cook off. Look, do you see, you see? It's, I mean, by half already, yep. the spinach. I'm trying to think of some other things that would be delicious. I mean, you could serve it with vegetables, but a carb is always best here. Need the bread to soak up the cheese. To soak up all the sauce. the sauce, yeah. Get the sauce going. All right, and to this, the liquid is definitely evaporating quickly, so that's good news. I am going to add um, a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. You can grate it yourself. You can also buy it from the store, whichever you choose to do, but about a quarter of a cup. I'm going to put it into this mixture. And then we're going to add cream cheese. Now this is just... Um, I don't know, what is this? this? I mean, one block, is this 12 ounces? Eight. eight. You're going to add eight ounces of cream cheese. <laughs> one block will do ya. I have sliced it up so that it, uh, I can place it in and it will melt at an even rate. 
can get this Parmesan. Oh my gosh. You think that we're close in the technology world for uh, having some sort of smell of vision Because... I think it's on the iPhone 12. Is <laughs> it? You're not getting one, so don't even... Yeah. I'm not new to this game. I know how that goes. All right. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit, and we are going to add the, um, the cream cheese in. Just, I cut it into just tiny little squares so we can get it all melted. Now, I didn't, because we're traveling, I did not prepare. I feel like we've kind of been in um, trying to get into the habit of preparing a dish beforehand if it has to go into the oven to show you what it looks like because, it, you know, you want to see how it all, all turns out. I didn't do that today. So... Be sure, after this episode of Cooking with Katie and a Cocktail is over, to come back and check out our photos, because I will, I promise you, I will post some photos of what this all looks like when it's all said and done, including the little toast points or the crostini that I'm going to make. Post all of that, and again, cookingwithkatieandacocktail.com, everything we posted, photos, video, I always uh, include a final say on my blog to talk about how I would change the recipe or um, things that we decided to do a little bit differently or things that might have gone wrong. Like one time we were cooking and I forgot to add all of the fresh herbs. So I added that in the final say, like, hey, don't forget to do that. Um, it's just kind of a little hindsight is twenty twenty type thing as we're cooking along. So, we're almost ready to get this into the oven. And by the way, the oven is 375. You're gonna cook the dip. It's gonna already, everything's already going to be fully cooked. So we're looking for the cheese that's on top to just be fully melted and bubbly and a little bit brown on top. But 375, I would say for about 15, 20 minutes. It's enough time to get your chips together. In this case, cut our French baguette. Let me show you. French baguette. I'm going to rub, rub a little bit of garlic on there and some olive oil and put it into the oven as well so we'll be ready when the dip is. Goes great with wine. Whatever else it is that you're drinking goes great with all of it. Just heard a large bang from upstairs. Yeah, I can hear kids. Where uh, granddaddy is watching the children. They could show up at any moment. And he could be tied up. He could be. Never know. Literally. <laughs> we get all the cream cheese melted. Does anybody have any uh, variations of spinach dip that they make in their house? Anything that they add? Spinach dip or sausage? Or I'm sorry. Well, yes, we're adding spinach to our sausage dip. Any var variations to the sausage dip that you make? There are different places all around this area that that make a really delicious sausage dip. Some call it hog dip. It's uh, really popular during the holidays. Uh, people, a lot of people make sausage balls and sausage dip during the holidays. I'm gonna try to move up just a little bit, but that's about. Can you see it? Uh, or can you turn on, isn't there a thing right there on the thing, turn on a light? It says bright. Oh, okay. It didn't really do anything. Okay. Again, you're just joining us. We're in my father-in-law's kitchen. It's great. Everything's, it's wonderful. Hey, it's got more light than we have in ours. He does. It's true. My coworker, Richard, pointed out, finally got a new kitchen. I just had to travel to get one. All right, so we're gonna just let this melt down just a little bit, and I'm gonna tell you again one more time. Um, the wine I am drinking, Jolo Winery and Vineyards of Crimson Creek. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you about the um, prepared casserole dish. Yes, Ben, what you got? Oh, I have oh, Yeah, I moved up, so you got Okay, uh, the prepared casserole dish, I love this thing. I think I got it from a Pampered Chef part, I know I did, from a Pampered Chef party. My sister was having, it's great, it's a, uh, ceramic I don't know what it's made of I think it is yeah, um, sir. <laughs> but it's great because it holds the heat and it has a really great lid that you can use just for taking you know when you have leftovers or whatever if you have enough you can just take it from table 
put it into your fridge and store it with the lid. I'm not gonna bake it with the lid on, just FYI. Now, in here, while I'm waiting for the rest of this to melt down, I do have about a um, cup and a half, cup and a half of some mozzarella, but I also had some leftover Gruyere from, what were we making? Making your uh, quiche. That's right, just last week, how quickly I forget. It's like, why do we have so much Gruyere in our fridge? I had leftover Gruyere, so I'm also going to add some of that because it is a great melty cheese. So we have some mozzarella, we have some Gruyere, about a cup and a half uh, that we're going to be adding on top. And I also have chopped up just some chives very finely, and that will go on the very top when it's pulled out of the oven. Have my oven set at 375, and we're going to be ready to go. This mixture, our sausage, our fire roasted tomatoes, our Italian seasoning, cream cheese, chicken broth, spinach, what else did I put in here? Everything, it's all in here, it's beautiful. The cream cheese is all melted down. Ben has been nervous from the moment we arrived that my mixture was going to be too much for my dish. You will remember. <laughs> you believe will remember. It. fully believe it. That when I made the quiche, which I forgot about until two seconds ago, um, that when I made the quiche, I overdid it and I overflowed it. It turned out to be delicious anyway, but I'm going to try not to do that here because we are cooking in my father-in-law's kitchen and I would prefer not to be the one to have to clean that all up. So now that this is ready, if there's a little bit of extra, I will just put it into a container and bring it home with us. What about that spoon that you got for Christmas? Would that help you? Spoon in there. I mean, it would have been helpful to pull out before the July cooking show. Got it. All right, I want to make sure you have a front row seat to all of this. Let's check it out. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned it to you, but this is my absolute favorite cooking tool of all time. It is just a bench scraper. I use it. It had to come from our home to Raleigh so that I could have it because I rely on it for everything. I love it. It's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen if not my most favorite, besides my garlic press. And uh, Annabelle did say uh, you could use a ladle, and I was like, yeah, probably yeah, a ladle too. Sure. I'm sure there's for one sure. in there. Yeah. Um, we just knew because we had purchased these, which are awesome. Ben, a little, tell a little bit about uh, this. It's a silicone, um, just a silicone spoon, like stirring spoon, yeah. and it's fantastic. It just oh, gets into all the corners on your pots and pans and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about scraping your pan because yeah. it's not made of aluminum or steel, I'm not gonna scrape anything. All right, so this is all finished. It's gonna go into our prepared dish. I will scoop it so that I don't... Uh, Do whatever you want to, honey. He doesn't mean that. He just knows that I'll be in charge of cleaning it. That's right. All right, this could take all day. No, nah, just, just pour it. Yeah, that's, that's gonna take all day. All right. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> Okay, duh, gently ladle it into our dish. Oh God, and I think we're going to be all right on a side Oh, store. wow. Yeah. Look at that. I am very impressed. Thank you. As am I. Okay. Woo, look at that. Perfect. All right. Now the moment that you all have been waiting for. I am going to top it with the mozzarella and the Gruyere cheese. This is a nifty little contraption too. Yes. Spray it right into the holder. And it comes with a, um, a top, so if you have leftover cheese, you can just take it and put it. All right. This is a mix, again, of the mozzarella and the Gruyere. Let's put it right. Make sure I get some of the Gruyere in there. Our children right now sound like they're coming through the ceiling. I don't know what they're yeah. doing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if anybody else is picking that up, but it's definitely like making things shake. Sorry if our camera's moving all around. All right, now you are gonna wanna put this onto a baking sheet because some of the cheese might start to overflow, some of the juices from the actual dip might start to overflow. That's where it's, I mean, that's the good stuff. Um, but just to save you the hassle of having to clean it. What? Go ahead. <laughs> My dad said, I'm impressed. Kids are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. 
you for a while. beauty is going to go into the oven again for about 15-20 minutes until it's all bubbly and the cheese is melted and nice and golden brown on top. When it comes out of the oven, be sure to top, to, uh, top it with some fresh chives just for some green, you know, again, the health. Um, but thank you all for joining me for Cooking with Katie and a cocktail live on location from our father my father-in-law's kitchen. It's all brought to you by Nisa's Country Sausage and Jolo Winery and Vineyards. We do have a very special gift. I'm going to pick out one name from everyone who's been live with us, from everyone who's been commenting. Jola Winery and Vineyards wants to give you a gift card, good for a tasting uh, when you go and visit, which is awesome. So I'm going to pick. I can't see. Do I have this one? Uh, okay. Yeah, it looks like you have. All right. Angela Jones. Angela, congratulations. You just got a gift card to Jola Winery and Vineyards. Y'all, happy 4th of July. Please, if you make... This recipe, go to cooking uh, with Katie at a cocktail.com. Cooking with Katie at cocktail.com. You in the comment section, post a photo of your dip and let me know what you thought of it. I hope you all have a great Fourth of July weekend. Cheers.